The final category, if you will, of the 10 principles of economics in chapter one is how the economy works as a whole. No pun intended, we're taking a macro look. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're starting with macroeconomics, and it's a broad look at the entire economy. Again, it's a language course. It's learning new words and what they mean. It's stuff you've observed but didn't really know what to call it. My hope is, out of this course, number one, that you enjoy it immensely. Number two, that... You become what I like to call a politician's worst nightmare. And I'm not talking left. I'm not talking right. I'm talking you, the voter. I hope you become economically literate to politician's worst nightmare. Once you're economically literate, once you understand the system, once you speak the language, they can't fool you anymore. And by they, I mean all of them. All right, so back to the principles. How the economy is affected as a whole, as it works as a whole. Principle number eight. A country's standard of living depends on its ability to produce goods and services. Your productivity. If you're blessed, and if you're watching this from the United States or another world power, you're blessed to live in a country that's highly productive. Your standard of living is much higher because of it. If you're in an area where it's not as productive, perhaps there can be a role for government to improve that. Sometimes the government's the thing in the way. If you're in an area that lacks property rights, you can't get a, you can't come up with a million dollar idea because if you come up with a million dollar good or service, it gets taken from you because there's no property rights. But assuming you have that, if you're in a place that's very productive and we measure productivity in macroeconomics with gross domestic product, which we'll talk about in this course, you're going to have a higher standard of living with higher productivity. That's what principle eight means. And again, it's how in general economies work. Principle number nine. You know what? Let me back back up to eight. I had to get on my soapbox a little bit, but I'm going to do it anyway. Sometimes well-to-do nations say, oh, we have poor, we have this, we have this. The world measures true wealth true poverty by being able to find fresh drinking water that won't kill you. Even our poorest in our country, and I'm, I'm recording this in the United States and the Southeast, and we have a lot of rural poor, but even our rural poor can dig a well and have clean drinking water. It won't kill them. That's true poverty on a world level. So if you hear me in these lectures talk about poverty, I, I'm talking about true poverty. I'm talking about Countries where we don't even think about that. Our homeless living under a bridge can walk to a 7-Eleven convenience store and get water out of the tap that won't give them a parasite and make them die. That's the poverty line I'm talking about. Now, principle number nine. Prices rise when the government prints too much money. Largely, the economy of economies of the world work on what's called fiat money. We're no longer on a gold standard or anything that's backed, has anything with intrinsic value. We work on fiat money. It's the government basically saying, hey, trust us. And the government thinks all that confidence comes from them, but really it comes from you, the consumer, and that believing that what your government's saying is actually gives those dollars value. And there's fiat money that's backed by, say, Nigeria, and the consumers don't have a ton of confidence in it. The U.S. is backed by one of the world's most powerful economies, certainly the biggest. Okay? Prices are what we pay for a good. All right? And we pay that in U.S.-backed currency. So if this U.S.-backed currency has good confidence and you believe it's worth something under the fiat money situation, you know that it's going to buy you a loaf of bread. But the problem is if the government goes this hog wild and starts printing a bunch of this money all at once, it becomes less valuable. Money is just another thing. Okay. Um, if I have an Apple adapter right here, a little power cord. See this? If this were the only Apple adapter in the world, it would be extremely valuable. But it's not. It's relatively inexpensive because they're easy to find. There's more supply. Dollars are the same way. What makes a rare baseball card, a Babe Ruth rookie card, so valuable? 
You could say conditioned, sure, but the fact of the matter is there's not a lot of them left out there. So they're very scarce. So something very scarce, it increases in value. Dollars are the same way. If there were one dollar in the whole economy to buy things, it would be very, very valuable. If there were $675 trillion in an economy, they have less value. So if the government, who backs it by fiat, says trust us and prints a bunch of money, what do you think is going to happen to the value of that dollar? Well, if there's too many of them, they become less valuable. They become worth, pause, less. I didn't say worthless, but worth, pause, less. And when something's worth less, it takes more of them to buy a loaf of bread. So when you go to the grocery store and the government's print too much money, bread costs more. The price has gone up. Now, you've seen prices grow up over time. You've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of different things. There's a lot of supply issues, say, with gasoline. But you've certainly seen the price of a movie, the price of a loaf of bread, the price of uh, whatever it is go up over time. That's called inflation. Back to the language course here. Overall rise in prices is inflation. It can result when a government prints too much money, when there's too much money in circulation. There's a lot of different reasons. We're going to get into the nitty-gritty in that later on in this course. Principle number 10, society faces a short-run trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Short-run, I think a year or less. So a year from now, back to now, that's, that's the short-run. After a year, we're starting to talk a long run. All right? Inflation is overall rise in prices. Okay? And unemployment all right, is people who want to work but can't find work. All right? So if in the long run, or in the, in the long run, they're actually not related. Because in the long run, unemployment does its own thing. It's a natural rate it just gravitates to. In the long run, just certain people aren't going to want to work, or certain people are going to want to work and aren't going to be in transition, that type of thing. Um, but in the short run, there's really a policy choice between putting pressure on prices. So if prices go up, more money's changing hands, more money's changing hands, that means things are selling a little more. The economy's rolling on. The economy's rolling on a little bit. You know, companies are seeing cash flow come in. They're going to hire more people. They hire more people. There's less people who want to work that can't find work. So unemployment tends to be down. So in the short run, they're really on a seesaw. You guys uh, you know what a seesaw is? It's a, a, a play a schoolyard playground game uh, board with something in the middle that's a pivot one kid goes up one kid goes down well those two kids are inflation and unemployment in the short run generally speaking we choose inflation that's why you see prices continuously go up over time add in some quantitative easing as the economy grows but inflation tends to be higher and unemployment tends to be lower now that's 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 the the temptation is to do that in perpetuity and that's why we see prices go up over you know continuously over the short run and as Maynard Keynes once said, in the long run, we're all dead. It's kind of gloomy. Um, so in the short run, you ride the seesaw. So just remember, you know, hey, this is of the principles. This is probably the most technical one. You don't have to get it. But by the time we get to, what, chapter 22 or so, um, you're going to be all over this one. So um, just keep in mind, if nothing else, you know, hey, we're at elementary level right now. Might as well use elementary school examples. If you went to private school, it's probably called teeter totter. Um, but if you're on a seesaw, it's really like a short run proposition anyway. It's like go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. Okay, big whoop. I'm not going to do that for like two hours. It's a short run proposition. Just remember, for two hours, there's two adoptive kids out there. One name inflation, one name unemployment. For the short run, they're riding the seesaw. <laughs>